the interesting part about AI is not AI. It's that we are currently in a phase where business people, and I guess this is the right place to say things like that, are kind of outmaneuvered by tech people. And this is why I want to give you a little glimpse in what is happening in technology. Like a business person normally has a goal. And a tech person has a problem. That does not mean we're all depressed. It just means that we look at things with a distance. And the result of that stuff is that a business person normally executes a plan as where a tech guy writes a program. Executing a plan is very flexible, right? You say you have a plan and then you execute, but it keeps changing all the time. A program does not change so much, but it can be executed millions and millions of times. And the interesting thing about AI is it introduces flexibility into this kind of solution. And that's what makes it very powerful. Very powerful in terms of economy. We do have two different types of economy. We have the new economy, the old economy. Unfortunately, they are set to clash extremely because the modern platform companies make all their money with 20% of um, the revenue. Then some analyst tells them to have some profit and margin and the rest is left over, normally more than 50%, which means that a platform company has the freedom to try stuff no problem. If Alibaba, for example, chooses to try and build a cancer drug and wastes a billion dollars and then says it doesn't work, what is going to happen to Alibaba's stock price? Nothing. People are going to congratulate Mr. Ma that he tried. If, on the other hand, Pfizer tries the same thing, which is a company where we know that there is very little room for maneuvering, spends a billion dollars on a cancer drug, even though they're the bigger experts in cancer drugs than Alibaba would be, the drug does not work. The CEO has to step in front of the crowd and say, like, oh, um, we have to cancel this billion dollar program. There is a vacancy on the CEO seat the next morning, and the stock price has collapsed by 30%. The problem, ladies and gentlemen, is that this means the established companies that have all these knowledge can't even try to build a good cancer drug because they have to make very small steps. The next part, and we call this disruption, the next is disintermediation, right? In the old style of economy, we have kind of this model here on this side where um, a lot of people who produce goods and services <clears throat> are competing on multiple channels to screw you, the consumer. Um, they have to make money with one single transaction, which means they will do anything so you buy. On the other hand, if between you and the person who produces something, there's not a lot of marketing channels, but there is a digital assistant who knows you quite well and who only needs to make money in your lifetime on you, you're going to get way better decisions. It is not that these new models are anti-consumer or whatever. As a consumer, you're getting the better results from a disintermediated economy. These two models mean that, A, the old companies don't even see the new companies coming until they replace them, and B, if you want to take this to the extreme, there are currently eight companies in the world that can produce a digital assistant. The world has eight customers to the rest of the industry. So if you want to survive in that kind of a world, if you just want to survive as a company, you need to do three things. You need to hmm, have a strong brand so people ask for you. You need to do innovation so you do things that others don't do. And you probably also need to offer services because in the end, people like to have a person-to-person -person interaction. And if that's not happening at the point of sales, it is services. My prediction to you, the services part that we have worked the last 50, 70 years to get rid of, replace the bank teller with the ATM, replace the post guy with the post box, and so on, right? So all that stuff is coming back for survival. But if you want to compete, if you actually want to thrive, there's only one way to do that, which is change your business models. So all you guys studying here have a great well because you get to write the new economics of exponential models, and can you create a market from this, or is it a dangerous oligopole, blah, 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 what 
a lot of people fear. I think this will end up in a fantastic market, but we have to get people on board with this. And this is why AI is important. Artificial intelligence and business go together because in order to do any of this, you need money and people. And here comes AI. What is happening in artificial intelligence right now means that any process can and will be run by an AI today. We can do this with today's technology. There are three types of AI. There's the one that you read about in the paper, which is the robot that tells you I love you and actually means it and knows what it's saying. Sorry to have to tell you, that's not real. No one can build this. None of us knows even how to do that. On the other hand, you have these narrow AIs where people just download one algorithm off the internet, feed it with a lot of data. That's the programmer's answer to McKinsey because what does that do? It creates efficiency. It looks at a single topic and creates a lot of efficiency. For my favorite narrow AI is a program that has learned how to grow tomatoes in a greenhouse. You connect the lights, you connect the fertilizer, you connect the water, poof, 20% more tomatoes. Unfortunately, it's an English company that does this. They find out that tomatoes in England don't taste so great. They try to grow beans. Obviously, this narrow AI kills all the beans because some things don't turn red. Um, efficiency, nothing we have to be afraid of, right? Because our companies have been doing this all the time. We are, this is what we do every day. Only this, these technologies and AI, mainly machine learning, allows us to do it with many more free variables. And in the center of this is general AI, things that can learn from experience and then execute this experience to take completely individual solutions. So in order to get this, we have to separate the hype from the science. The reason why I do talks at all is, you know, I'm this nerd. I like basements and screens, like not like lights and stuff. But it needs to be separated, right? So we're going to separate it. Three things that AI is not. Number one, computers don't understand anything. So if someone tells you my machine understands blah, 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 you are listening to the marketing record. What computers can do is they can compare understanding structures um, that are already created with an incoming data stream. And the great things that computers can do is they can do this 24-7 without ever going tired. But they don't understand a thing of the data that you're presenting them with. Number two, to say that a human brain is the model for a computer, or a computer is modeled after the human brain, ladies and gentlemen, is roughly like saying an amoeba is modeled after the human body, which it clearly is not just, and they are similar, yes, because they both have cells. Only the one is one cell and the other is a few billion. So um, a large neural network today has about a million, a million two nodes, and it needs half a nuclear power plant to run. A Human brain has 86 billion nodes, and that's after it killed off around 30 billion in puberty. Um, <laughs> this really happens, read it. Um, <laughs> and it only runs on 20 watts. Like, I don't get this, but you are all fit, so you get this, right? So, um, and in the brain, there's also a chemical system. So if you're having the party later and, and drinking too much alcohol, you'll know you're only doing brain research. And people also suspect there is a quantum mechanical system. Seriously, the computers that we built today are about as far away from a brain as an amoeba. And even if we can build one with 86 billion nodes, it still doesn't have the chemical or quantum mechanical system. Third is people believe that AI equals machine learning. Machine learning is one algorithmic family, and then most people think that AI is actually not just machine learning, it's deep learning, so only one type of algorithm. Imagine you can only imagine one thing with your brain. This is what we call male, right? Male only think one thing. <laughs> So there are lots of other people in the world who can imagine many more things. Um, machine learning is not the single thing in AI. There are many more algorithms like machine reasoning, like genetic algorithms, and a lot of other stuff. It's very important to understand. Yet, A, they can run any process. If you want to build an AI, there's four things you need. You need algorithm, zzz, not just one, zzz, like many. You need data, you need talent, and you need compute power. Compute power is available. You just get this from the cloud. Algorithms are available. You can download them from the internet. Data, that's a difficult topic we just need to talk about. And talent is why you're here. 
So data. Data is very important because people think that data has value. Like data is the oil, which, um, no. Data is used to describe the world because a machine arrives in the world and it's empty. It's not like your baby who already has an opinion and so on and so forth. It comes completely empty. So you have to give it something that it understands what you want it to do and don't have to explain like everything. That's data. Data has nothing to do with the oil of the 21st century. If data is the oil of the 21st century, we are the Indians who know only setting fire to the oil on high holidays. No cars, no plastic. Data is there to describe the world to a machine. And you can collect data in two ways to do that. You can do it inside out. You basically sit inside the economy, you look at the data that is being produced, um, and thus you try to interpret the world, because if you know how to make toasters and who buys toasters, and if you know how to make bread and who buys bread, you kind of probably will understand sooner or later that people use bread, put it in a toaster, and then eat it. Because so, somehow it doesn't come back, right? You can also learn this if you sit on the consumer's shoulder, like Google and Facebook do, and they tell you that they toasted their bread and they're eating it and where they bought it and all this kind of stuff. It's all there just to describe the world. This is important. And before you get crazy in Europe here is data and da AI and data protection are not contradicting. This really doesn't matter because there is so much data around there, you don't have to like steal it from everybody. It, there's no contradiction there. I just need to put this in because there's so many people saying, oh, but we can't do AI here because blah, blah, blah. Not true. It's more a question of thinking. If you want to introduce AI into a company, and if you really say, like, I want these 80% efficiency because I need to compete, I want to thrive in this new world, you need to find one important starting point. You need to want to do it. If you only want AI for marketing, I have a very good suggestion. You take out your telephone, you take 20 pictures, you have used at least 10 different algorithms in the AI field. You can now write in your marketing brochures, you're doing AI, put the phone back, you're done. It's very cheap. If you really want the efficiency out of AI, you will have to get your act together and want to do it. And you will have to introduce it step by step like an onion. You use AI to automate something that generates a little more data than it needs to automate the next thing and the next and the next and so on. And you do that part with the data so that everything you automate next is faster than the one you started with. Because if everything takes two years and you have 100 processes, you're done in 200 years, I don't think the company will exist that long. And only after you've started this, start thinking about your new business model and how to use data to analyze it and so on. One of the large CEO asked me just last year, said, like, Mr. Bose, if I give you all my data, will you tell me my new business model? And I said, no. If you give me all your data, I will run 80% of your company. And you have time to think about your new business models. And this is a very important message because people are creative. They can create new business models. They can even motivate others to turn around. Machines can only execute. 80% of all processes, or all processes that don't use human-to-human -human communication can and will be run by a machine. That is putting our economy upside down. AI is the way to do it, and it's going to be great for us because as humans, we're finally gonna get back to something that we can do well, which is being creative and being nice to each other. We're not so great in working like machines. This is why in highly developed company, countries, we get depressed. There are two ways of learning. You can learn from observation. This is when you start with the machine learning part where you look and experiment. Or you can learn because someone who already knows teaches you. Learning from observation is typically what companies do that have a lot of very broad data. Learning from someone who already knows is what established companies do because they already know something, I hope. The interesting part is the learning from what you already know has a 95% energy advantage. It needs 95% less energy. So the next time you hear someone telling you, oh, I'm so sad, all these valley companies are going to run over me, it means that like, you're just not using your advantage. You're, you are like 
you're supposed to die if you're not using a 95% advantage. This is very important. So if we really want to fulfill the promise of artificial intelligence in the economy, is probably the only thing that can save the established economy. It means making the experience that is stored in all of us, in all our companies, executable. Thank you very much.